Okay, um, let's get started. Ni hao ma. I think it's right or not, but hi everyone. Um, so thanks for uh, you know, staying being here. Um, <clears throat> today uh, I'm going to talk about actually the, our SDN uh, approach uh, we've been using in our data center. Actually, this is my personally second talk uh, for OpenStack. We had the very first talk uh, with Mike Wilson, one of my peer uh, at Portland uh, last time uh, regarding our data center. Um, <clears throat> so how many people actually attended our first talk at Portland here? Other than my friends, okay. So all new actually here, okay. Um, so from this title, I'd like to just uh, have, like, okay, how many kind of interesting keywords here? Okay, truly open, commoditized, and software-defined network or networking, and OpenStack, of course. So from, from those titles, I think, there are two important keywords. And one is, uh, op of course, OpenStack. The other is uh, SDN, Software Defined Networking. Now, the, finally, OpenStack meets SDN, and SDN finally meets OpenStack. I think that's all about Neutron project. That's my view. I mean, you know, think about how many plugin, you know, SDN plugin existing uh, in, in the current, uh, you know, Neutron. Okay, it's not working well. Okay, so the question is, um, why they need each other, basically? Are they, are they nice to each other? Or do they really need? That's a question we would like to answer for this talk. Um, from the OpenStack perspective, one of the critical components that we have to have is the technology that allows to virtualize networking. Um, without it, always a lot of problems. Now then, as of today, SDN is one of the most promising technology. Seems like it give us the power to virtualize uh, networks, really. From the SDN perspective, SDN st still stays in its infancy. And they needed to find killer application to prove, yeah, SDN is really awesome. Then OpenStack is one of the biggest candidates for them right now. So these two, two big brothers finally start to talk to each other. Okay. For our data center, um, we, very interesting kind of requirement. You know, our company basically uh, products, our products basically, you know, traditional hosting company, like a dedicated BPS, shared BPS. Um, those are not really cloud product yet but our entire infrastructure based on OpenStack and SDN. So very interesting. We aggressively utilize all edge coding technology for the underlying, but still we're selling traditional product. So ironically, that situation gave us more favorable room, favorable room so that we can focus on only set up targeting goals and optimize fully. And then uh, we're trying to actually move to the next stage. So let, let me focus, you know, talk about our L2 fabric uh, data, data infrastructure. <coughs> so when VM is migrated to another rack, the requirement is this one. We don't want to ask a customer to change public IP address at all. We need to keep them. Um, and we need to still achieve QoS, isolation, ACL, file, everything. So basically this talk consists of two main parts. What we've done, what we are planning to do in terms of SDN. So for this part, we already done. So I'm going to share all the detail level of algorithm, you know, mechanism, how we can achieve all this goal. And the next stage is okay. Let me just use uh, so. So when there are relevant VM belong to ten, same, same tenant, and the next stage we would like to actually provide uh, tenant isolated network as well. As you can see, yeah, this is wonderful application for SDN, you know. That's our hope. Okay, we hope, hope to utilize the SDN technology to achieve our goals here, okay? Now, there are some several key points I would like to really, uh, you know, make here, you know, before going to next slide, from the targeting L2 fabric. What does it mean by L2 fabric here? 
Um, another data center, you know, I don't know, typically probably L3 fabric rather than L2, right? And they chop up some of area or pod or john something, and then, and then they link together through L3. But our data center is purely just L3 fabric. There is a reason. So what we are trying to build, build is actually simple data forwarding plane. And very interestingly, there is no unknown traffic in terms of a virtualizing network in OpenStack. Meaning is that when new VM created, we already know that which IP address assigned, which I, I, you know, traffic needed to be allowed, or which traffic is needed to be blocked out. We already know that there is no yellow signal. That's one important actually observation. Um, we don't want to use any L3 agent. It's a lot of actually performance overhead issue, so many issues we ran into. We don't want to use any netting. That's the, our, one, one of our strong requirement. Have you seen this movie, Matrix? So Agent Smith, you know, finally the, remember the how finally Neo dealt with this huge number of clones of Agent Smith? Don't you remember? Run away. Literally five minutes fighting, he just ran away. Okay, gave up, okay? Avoid them, don't face them, okay? Third one, we would like to keep high entropy in the packet. There are several reasons. One of the important reasons is we would like to really utilize this uh, variety of information for underlying L2 layer multipass. We don't want to lose variety, okay? So this kind of a simple L2 fabric is very naturally help us to achieve seamless and very straightforward VM migration. Okay. So let me just give one example before starting our real talk, okay? So 15 minutes here, what is it all about? If you ever run neutron port list against 20,000 port, it takes 15 minutes. Okay? Here's ball. Oh, I didn't measure. Did you measure the time? Oh, let me try one more time. One, two, three. Okay. Now three seconds. So we found this problem, and then we walked through all the code, and find, okay, when we fully optimized the code, finally, it was reduced to three seconds, <laughs> even for 20,000 ports. Okay. Point is not that specific example. Point I would like to make here that kind of a scale level we have to deal with in our data center, okay? Huge number of objects. Basically, basically we are running actually 20,000 physical server in one frame of OpenStack. I think we are the one of very few uh, largest uh, you know, deployment environment, I believe. We, we are not using any cell. Basically, if you know the cell, basically we effectively using one cell. Done. By the way, in Havana release, I found that somebody actually found that the port list bug or you know, problem. So it was improved a lot, actually. Oh, you're okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> About halfway. I know that still there are some rest of things still overheaded. So it still takes a kind of a five minutes or six minutes. But at least I could see that more than half of it is gone. Good. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So let's look at the, how many you know, available SDN control right now. Okay. Knoxbox, NEC. Right view, big switch, NICERA, Onyx, Floodlight, huge number of ASTM control out there. And some of them already has a plug in an OpenStack. Some of them will be. And for example, like Open Daylight. Okay? Okay, as a user, we don't care. What we are care is that actually is it open or not? If something is closed, how many boxes here? Is it four or three? I don't want to waste time to figure out, you know, something is hidden. Oh, is it four or three? Just open it. I need to see that, okay? So open daylight is one of our kind of candidate really we are interested in, and we have a hope. Open daylight probably, you know, truly open kind of component in Neutron. It hasn't, has not been actually yet uh, merged, but I believe in, during the actual ice house, they're gonna probably, you know, add finally this one. So let's see. By the way, this is the only plugin name that really starts with open. <laughs> okay. 
So let's look at the general uh, entire frame of, of uh, SNL architecture. There are three components, typically, one of the external entity at top, at the middle, SDN controller, that has typically a kind of set of SDN application logic. And some control actually has a network topology management plan as well to, to, to keep the global view of all the physical switch, how they really connect to each other. Um, some of the plugin is only single instance by design itself. Some of the plugin by design already distributed. And at, at the bottom, as you can see, um, open flow pro protocol switch there. I mean, there could be other type of uh, you know, protocol as well, but right now, as of today, open flow pretty much kind of a, uh, one promising standard people really utilize. And then we also fully utilize actually open flow protocol right now. So what happened typically is that, what, what it calls a northbound API, one of the external you know, entity call uh, API to SDN controller, and then after that, uh, through the southbound API, in basically open flow protocol, they deploy necessary flows. Let's uh, see what kind of a property or you know, features there. So basically, through the southbound API, what they're trying to do is kind of making some forward plan. Okay, by specifying rule, okay, this packet needed to be dropped or allowed to where. But interesting thing is, that once you start to use the open flow protocol on physical switch, effectively you're gonna lose uh, some of the legacy, like uh, traditional features, for example, source map learning, that's gone. Because you're gonna have full control over the entire physical switch. Okay? That is an interesting, Feature, features, timing, some flow is reactive, some flow is proactive. Meaning, um, we can proactively deploy necessary obvious flow rules on targeting, targeting switch, or ask switch to consult SDN controller when there is no rule yet deployed. But as we discussed, okay, in our specific context background, there is no unknown traffic. Mean, we can do all the time proactive. We don't have to worry about all kind of delay issue when you use reactive mode. Transition, okay, our data center, okay. Still, everything is traditional, you know, L2. Um, we, we have not really utilized yet any kind of SDN technology for the physical switch. How are we gonna, you know, when we turn on, like, a, you know, from, from the existing switch, you know, to open flow, what will happen? Wow, we need to figure out, you know, uh, something like, for example, like I'll say this way, storm control is very com com conventional actually feature on existing traditional switch. switch. Then you need, you need to actually make sure that the storm control still will be available for your open flow port. And some of vendor switch actually has only, providing only pure open flow port versus some of vendor actually providing hybrid port mode, meaning that Open flow, as well as legacy, a traditional feature still is working. And definitely, you're gonna actually run into this issue. Okay, what is the maximum allowable number of open flow rules you can add into physical server? This is really big deal right now. Um, some of vendor using TCAM, and TCAM typically is you know, 4K, is very ex expensive equipment and you're gonna end up only using 4K. I would like to say to, to those vendors providing 4K, don't say you, you support open flow protocol, okay? <laughs> um, we've seen this number, 120K. Actually, we are using IBM Switch right now. And thankfully, IBM Switch has very intelligent, uh, you know, I don't have any speci specific relations with vendor or something, okay? What we are focusing on is that as long as vendor providing Standard protocol, we just go with it, okay? But anyway, thankfully, IBM Switch has a very intelligent way to deal with all this open flow protocol implementation using Ford DB rather than TCAM. So they, they could actually successfully actually increase that the maximum allowable number of uh, OBS flow here. And eventually, you need to think about, okay, how you can bundle up those necessary flows so that you can effectively re reduce required number of uh, flow on the switch side. Anyway, this is all gen generic. SN architecture. 
Let's finally look at our OpenStack SDN framework, how it's working. Okay? So, there's a neutron server, neutron DB. Suppose that we have a variable that, you know, chosen SDN controller. Agent, what it does, basically prepare necessary basic ob obvious structure, right? For example, like IP address of, you know, SDN controller, so that, okay, whenever you needed to do something, okay, consult that guy. When there is a real request to create virtual interface, what happens is they actually create the relevant database item and then sending typically REST API, but whatever the protocol let's say, okay? There is a communication between them. So call the REST API to the SDN controller and then deploy uh, OBS flow through the actually directly that uh, established connection with the OBS, right? So from this architecture, very interestingly, it is by design intended to be minimal functionality there for agent. Because, obvious, SDN controller should have its own control logic. All complex, all kind of business logic should be there, not agent. That's why intentionally agent is supposed to be so far is so dumb. So good to be here, finally. You know, ML2 finally has this path. Uh, for some or other, other part, I didn't have this RPG core from server to agent because of this, uh, you know, lack of feature. That's why I was so happy, you know, <laughs> to see that, that RPG finally you guys added the functionality. So let me see here. Who is creating OpenBSH tab interface? Nova Compute. What? Why Nova Compute needed to create OBS tab? I mean. We thought that the neutron is uh, main motivation is to pull out all the net network functionality to the neutron and whatever the component in neutron is supposed to create obvious tab. Of course, there is no RPG core. Who can do that? Okay, just use Nova Compute that has already RPG core and <laughs> just using Nova Compute. So these are the problem actually we, we kind of run into in our um, data center. But regardless, any kind of problem, anyway, we have to apply, we had to apply this framework to our environment. So let's talk, let's talk about how we can, you know, apply this framework into our data center where we're running, let's say, 18,000 physical server and each guy running all OBS. 18. 18 virtual switch. They are all connected to SDN controller. Not only that, you already have hundreds of, you know, top of rack switch, physical switch. They are all needed to contact SDN controller. The answer now here, okay, doesn't scale. We can't use this solution in our environment. Doesn't work. So we got dilemma. We started to talk to SDN vendor controllers. So what is truly scalable SDN solution now? Not yet. Will be soon, okay? So ask him when? Okay, who knows? <laughs> okay. So then we turn into actually the neutron team, okay? Yeah, we got this kind of question, okay? So here, uh, can you use a different approach? Nope. Oh, really? Why not? Vendor working on it. <laughs> okay, we have a circulating dilemma right now, okay? This one actually story is back then like uh, more than six months ago, okay? So we started, I think, uh, deploy real old VM, I think in January probably, right? <coughs> so we, we just thought that somehow we need to have some more understanding or deep insight about what's going on really in terms of using SDN. So we look at one component here, a computer node. They're running from VSwitch. They are running a neutron agent, and they are relevant to VMs. And then observation we made were basically, oh yeah, neutron agent already fully distributed everywhere. Structurally, it's really good. There is no single point of failure. Oh yeah, this is a good framework. And when you look at the deployed open flow rules on every single computer node, those are rules very specific to their own VMs only. Of course, right? We don't have to deploy the other host VM flows on my host. No, I don't have to worry about that. So structurally, I'm saying, already fully distributed. So we thought that, oh, this is a very good structure we can utilize. 
somehow without using any SDN controller. So that's our, that's our starting point. Like, okay, let's add actual SDN functionality into agent itself. We're not going to use any, any external SDN controller. And then deploy necessary OBS flow rule only, only through Neutron. Yeah, so this is our approach, finally. When there is NOBA Neutron uh, server got the request to create, of course, create DB item, directly call agent through RPC, finally. <laughs> and then ask them, okay, please deploy necessary API. But not only that, if you ever need to also control physical side switch, not only computer node, then you can also send this RESTful API separately to the to your actually SDN controller. I think what they explain is that is pre-commit or post-commit is kind of related to this story. Then finally, um, the agent itself deployed necessary OBS flow directly without having any SDN controller. Now, left side, that story is what we've done so far. Right story, what we are planning to do. Now, you're going to get to know eventually why we need to eventually have a SDN controller. Because in terms of dealing with the physical side, anyway, we have to have some, some kind of SDN controller concept, you know? So. Now, this diagram, I just uh, pulled out some of the you know, famous, I, it's from, it's from actually just a paper that has this five page last year published in, in uh, uh, SDN hot, Hot, hot SDN, hot SDN uh, conference. And I found a very interesting suggestion from the paper. They, they talking about this separation of a controller. Let me read this paragraph. In the structure, as you can see, there is a source and then destination, and the very first hub switch, they call it actually edge, English edge. And then for the destination, there is another English edge switch. And then between them, yeah, whatever the you know, fabric elements there. Then they're saying that fabric is responsible for packet transport, mainly. FG is responsible for providing much more rich services such as network security, isolation, mobility. And turns out too, the author of this paper is the SDN inventor, Martin Casado. So we were, we were very thrilled about that, like, oh, we already done it, and then SDN inventor saying same thing? Oh, this is good. So actually, thankfully, I had a chat with Martin uh, about the very first day, who was almost leaving and then I got kind of confirmation from him, and then he promised he wanna watch my video. So hopefully, Mark, you need to see this. <laughs> okay, so I borrowed your diagram here, okay? Martin, sorry, Martin. <laughs> anyway, so the, the point I would like to make here is this one. Some kind of, there's a very distinct role between the set of uh, edge switch versus fabric switch. That is very interesting recognition and understanding in terms of utilizing SDN. So here are key services we already implemented, we're using for live production, using only Neutron. We don't use any SDN controller yet. I mean, as I said, we're gonna use that for other functionality, tenant isolated network. But when you use a flat network, physical flat network, and on there, everything is directly attached, there was a lot of question I remember, some people are arguing about why we have to use always L3 agent, some people you know, want to use directly attached it, but still would like to keep isolation. Yeah, this is the case, exactly. We've done it using this framework. We already deployed the firewall rule. Well, very interestingly, uh, when he implemented this firewall rule API, which it doesn't exist at all yet, that's why you know, we newly created everything within, within our framework, we actually end up using NOBA API, unfortunately. Because as, as, as we discussed, you know, the neutron framework doesn't work. There is a lot of really lacking factor. <laughs> what a shame using Nova, you know, component to, to de deploy actually OBS rules. But anyway, through the ML2, we, we really hope that finally we can properly utilize ML2 to provide all this, uh, you know, API in the right place. <laughs> we already have an you know, entire IP spring rule. So if one IP address is assigned, the other IP address you know, try to be used by VM, automatically turned down. 
We already utilize QoS bandwidth there. We already utilize multiple IP address per port. These are all implemented by open flow rules on every single host without using any external SDN controller. <coughs> so I borrowed this slide from my first talk at Portland. I believe finally this slide found the right spot with all background sharing here. So this is background. You know, this, given that all this context, we finally utilized uh, this method. So for QS, we set up outgoing bandwidth, like 10 meg or 50 meg. And then we deployed the destination MAC address matching op open flow flows for incoming packet. So effectively cut out. If some bogus MAC address tried to be arrived at VM, OK, we just up front just cut out. For the outgoing packet, we look at the source IP address from the packet, and then if it's a legitimate IP address or spoofed, if it's spoofed, throw it down. It doesn't go out at all. Now, what if VM tried to connect to the other VM that reside on the same host through the, their public IP address that we need to allow them, right? So we end up actually deploying that n square number of source MAC destination MAC address matching flows, right? Because if we have n VM on my host, then I need to have full combination of you know, flows. So it was not really desired. So we actually end up working on optimizing this path. So we newly added actually another path of, uh, you know, beef interfaces between uh, two bridges. So as you can see here now, total number of required OVS flow is 2N rather than N square. So on each side, we just deploy the destination magnets only. We don't have to look at source at all because of this uh, um, different route. Fire rule, I would say it is effectively the same functionality of a security group. So the API allows to specify protocol, targeting protocol, targeting ports, which one needed to be open, which one needed to be closed. For incoming, for outgoing, we can do everything here like this. Now, very interestingly, I got to know, you know where, while I'm attending some of design session for Neutron um, team, um, one of a one of a kind of a lack of a feature or fear that people worried about migration from the Nova network to Neutron is this kind of security group is all of a sudden it's kind of gone. I mean, unless you try to find specific SDN control that really providing matching functionality, basically, yeah, it's very hard to kind of keep the traditional feature that provided by Nova network before, and then when you migrate, if you lose some of functionality, then who's gonna do that? So I think, um, you know, this hopefully can be one of good motivation to have in our Neutron so that people, yeah, you don't have to worry about, you can keep same functionality, even Neutron, without using any um, special component. Okay, we, we've done so far the what we've done, and so it's been really successful for us to utilize all these technologies in terms of providing public IP address to the customer without asking them change it uh, when they migrated there. Um, you know. um, but we, we finally actually come to the point the next phase we would like to provide the tenant isolated network using this same SDN technology. And then we found that actually Okay, now finally we need to work on some real SDN controller side. So this is a very typ typ typical um, structure. Uh, from now on, I'm just uh, you know just trying to share you know possible options uh, with you guys. Okay, so neutral agent basically try to actually change the actual MAC address to positional MAC. You know, as I said, in terms of dealing with this physical switch side, you have to think about how you can effectively reduce the required number of obvious flow on physical side. side okay. So this is one of kind of a very you know, well-known trick. By changing the MAC address to the loc location-based, okay, you can easily bundle the, on the higher level like, actually switch using mask. Okay? That's the basic idea. So then what happens is that physical side switch will see only position of MAC. They don't even know what was the actual MAC at all. They all just consider, oh yeah, I can see only just the position of MAC only. 
and then they can easily bundle up at the core switch. Now, finally, at the destination, you can just transfer back to original MAC address. So VM side, they don't even know what happened internally mechanism. The physical side, they don't even know what was the real actual mechanism. Doesn't matter. That's one way to deal with. And yeah, as, as Robert actually explained, some even with this framework, sometimes we need to set up a separate proxy server or not, depending on your kind of environment. Uh, but basically, what needed to do is here, actually, we just provide pass determination algorithm, that's all. <clears throat> and what you're planning to do is actually, okay, we're going to use the external controller against only physical switch size, not but virtual you know, switch on every host, because agent only dealt with all kind of necessary functionality. Now, another option that you can consider is, this is, I think, one of very popular mechanisms the SDN controller actually tried to push in here, overlay network. So your, your fabric side PEP can be L2 or L3, but you don't want. Um, as long as there is an overlay network tunnel created, you know, like a lot of protocol, VXLAN, STT, GRE, someone, something is a standard, something is not yet standard, and there's a lot of, you know, debate which one is better in terms of performance. Um, but as you know, the GRE is a least I mean, GRE performance is really bad, you know. So people try to utilize any better solution, uh, VXLAN, any other type. Uh, but there's a good thing, though, here, like uh, in terms of using overlay network, it simplify a lot of actually necessary requirements because overlay network is simply work everywhere as long as there is a routable there, route, you know, routable path there. So what switch side will see is like a normal TCP or UDP packet, okay? So VXLAN use UDP and STT actually use, use a TCP for encapsulating L2 packet. So cross side anyway, it's just normal UDP or TCP packet, they will see. And then when they is arri arrived uh, at the destination and then they're gonna just use a tunnel again. So these are all actually for the unicast stuff. Again, this is our plan. We're gonna use the external controller anyway. Now, Multicast broadcast packet is kind of very tricky part. Um, so this is one way, okay? Uh, there is a drawback with this approach, but so basically what you call is who are you? Meaning is that when the switch look at, the, uh, receive the multicast or broadcast packet, look at the source MAC address. Meaning that who, who really wants to send this broadcast packet? Meaning is that I can, I can figure out the old relevant VM that belongs to the same tenant ID. That way we can just broadcast necessary pass only to the relevant VM. So by looking at the who are you stuff, and then, oh yeah, I know, I need to send out two ports because you know, there are some VMs you know, existing under that uh, path. And then each switch is just having all the who are you question and then properly select only minimum necessary ports as an output. But the problem of this approach is that uh, you need to also think, you know, think, work on this stuff, actually. You, you're going to end up producing a lot of actual open flow rules because you need to look at the source MAC address. And once you start to look at the source MAC address, uh, typically you're going to end up using TCAM, which has 4K, then kind of a dilemma. So yeah, it's kind of there. But I'm I, I, I envisioning, actually, eventually, when the, this SDN technology is really mature enough, and the vendor really tried to provide SDN dedicated uh, you know, chipset or you know, all kind of optimized stuff, I really hope that we can effectively have some good uh, network architecture soon. I, I don't know, you know, who knows? <laughs> okay, so another way to deal with is that um, uh, whenever the one, one multicast packet generated, um, we can generate multiple unicast packet for one multicast packet, so that we're just sending out multiple number of unicast packet to the switch, and then uh, switch side only see unicast packet, just as normal. So we don't have to really utilize any specialized uh, mechanism for stuff. So this also is one of uh, approach from the existing actually S10 controller right now. Okay, so these are the old plan we trying to do. If something, goes well in the next release. I really hope to have this kind of talk again. Okay, 
how we can achieve the overcrowding problem. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so we are on the way now. So let me bring the, our first slide for this talk. We, we started from this slide, right? OpenStack meets SDN, SDN meets OpenStack. Our message we would like to deliver is this one. We needed to have truly open commodity SDN solution in OpenStack as a default so that everyone can use that, okay? And if some people, some you know, customer or company wants to utilize very you know, advanced feature, okay, please go ahead, no problem. But for the community, you know, I think we need to have truly open plugin. That's, that's our message we try to really deliver. Um, so thankfully, when we already have uh, several discussion with the Neutron team and then Nova team and some of all other PTL um, members, uh, at least we got very positive feedback. Seems uh, one way to go. Uh, I mean, we're going we're gonna to leave that existing plugin. We're not going to change anything. Simply try to add new, t new type of plugin like this so that people can enjoy. That's the uh, whole thing. And then I submitted a design suggestion, but uh, unfortunately it was rejected because there are a lot of more topics important uh, other than this one. So if you are interested in the, our, you know, some of the written uh, document about our work, you can see uh, some of the paragraph over there. So thanks a lot. Uh, I think uh, I, I can just uh, start to get some questions. Uh, so could you please uh, send the microphone here? Okay. So I had a question about your top of the rack switches. Are you using any white box solutions? Or are you working with any vendors? What is, I mean, the kind of features that you're asking for, I don't think any of the top of the rack switch yeah, that's a, a kind of a tricky part. You know, you know, eventually, anyway, you're going to end up using some specific vendor product anyway, right? So actually, as I said, we're using actually IBM Switch. So IBM Switch is one of the core contributor to the open daylight. Too. So thankfully, we got really good support from IBM right now. So probably we're going to just continue to work on that. So I, someone has asked the question, I think. First, I mean, are you going to contribute this upstream, and, and why isn't it upstream already? I mean, a lot of this is really nice stuff. If you're thinking of this as a competitive advantage for, for Bluehost, I'm not sure, but, but it would be really good to see patches for yeah. this. We are fully committed to open everything we developed. Okay, that's for sure. Okay? Now, why we don't have yet, you know, a lot of you know, other practical issues, but we, we are really fully committed. So if you help us to no, no, really no. add, yeah. You're going to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I would love to see all of this pushed upstream. And I think you guys should definitely collaborate with us on this. So Thanks a lot. Okay, cool. Uh, you said you don't use NAT. So how is your public IP solution in your deployment? Which, which solution? The public IP support. Private IP? Public IP. Yeah, that's, that's right. We, we directly attach the uh, you know, public VLAN. So every VLAN directly attaches to public VLAN. That's all. So that's why I showed that uh, how we can provide the steel, even in that case, how we can provide the isolated network, right? So these are the all the diagram. Basically, we achieve uh, isolated network. Meaning is that you know we only route through, you know, look at the destination mag matching. Meaning is that by looking at the destination MAC address. Which VM has this mechanism? We know that only passing through that. All other VM doesn't even see this packet at all. Right? Yeah. Any other question? Okay. So is there, um, do you see value in, uh, in having kind of a combined information base for your virtual switches and your physical switches? I mean, the fact that you're now using an SDN controller just for the physical, your, your, your TORs and everything else is kind of controlled by Neutron, what does that do to your yeah. overall visibility? That's exactly the question we are thinking now, yeah. I mean, that's kind of a tricky question. And then to myself, always I asking the same question, like uh, eventually we have to ending up really should have those global you know, view, including vSwitch or not. Very interesting so far in terms of dealing with all this uh, full set of functionality. Turns out to be not yet, no. I mean, no. But I don't know who knows. Yeah, that's a very good question, yes. Yeah. 
Okay, sounds good. Thanks a lot for being here. Okay.